We are getting ready for a socially distanced upcoming City Council meeting set for Monday, the 24th day of August, 2020. From Farmers Branch City Hall, this is the 118th edition of Council Countdown on FBTV. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Bryson. During the next few minutes, we're going to go into detail on the upcoming City Council consent agenda and run down other items on the regular agenda at this last regular meeting in August. First up, after a report on study session items, members of the Council will consider items placed in the consent portion of the agenda. There are seven items in the August 24th consent agenda. Agenda item I-1 is to consider approving the City Council meeting minutes for August 10 and the budget retreat minutes for August 11 and 12. Agenda item I-2 is to consider adopting resolution number 2020-103, authorizing the execution of a residential demolition rebuild program incentive agreement for the owner of the property located at 3103 Rolling Knoll. In an effort to improve the quality of housing opportunities in Farmers Branch, the City Council enacted a residential demolition rebuild program pursuant to Chapter 380 of the Texas Local Government Code to encourage the redevelopment of existing single-family detached residen residential properties with the construction of new higher value single family detached residential structures. Applicants James and Anne Marie Massey are applying for the demolition rebuild incentive for an existing residence at 3103 Rolling Knoll, which has an improved valuation excluding the land of $163,000. The incentive for this range of $150,000 or higher includes a seven-year rebate on municipal taxes based on the difference between the original home's appraised value excluding the land value as determined by the Dallas County Central Appraisal District. City Administration recommends adopting Resolution Number 2020-103. Agenda Item I-3 is to consider adopting Resolution Number 2020-108, adopting a citywide parks, recreation, and open space master plan for the City of Farmers Branch. In December of 2019, an agreement was signed with Duncan Sims Soffles Incorporated to assist in the preparation of the first Farmers Branch Citywide Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan. The master planning process involved a thorough assessment of parks, recreation, and open space needs by staff and the landscape architect. It took into account the interests of the community through multiple meetings with the Parks and Recreation Board and an April 2020 Facebook Live Town Hall meeting that garnered more than 1,000 views and 103 comments from community park users. The Farmers Branch Citywide Parks, Recreation and Open Space Master Plan will enable decision makers to prioritize resource allocation decisions for new facilities and rehabilitation projects programs and services in a manner that is fiscally responsible, environmentally sound, publicly supported, and politically prudent. Additionally, it develops a comprehensive plan for funding opportunities. A draft of the Citywide Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan was presented to members of the Parks and Recreation Board on July 16th. Modifications from the board were incorporated into a revised draft that was presented to the City Council on August 10th. Further modifications were made and the Parks and Recreation Board made a final draft of the plan, on, approved that as a final draft of the plan on August 20th. City Administration recommends adopting Resolution Number 2020-108. Agenda item I-4 is to consider approving Resolution Number 2020-107, awarding unit price bids for the annual purchase of chemicals and fertilizers to numerous vendors for the Parks and Recreation Department. Bidding an annual supply increases staff efficiency and is more cost-effective uh, cost than buying individual items uh, numerous times throughout the year. Bid requests were advertised and sent to seven vendors. Three bids were received and opened on August 11th. Vendors were notified in the specification that the quantities were estimates and that the city may purchase adjusted quantities of each product. The low bids received met specifications on all items with the exception of number three, uh, that is Ocelopren, uh, site, one, uh, site 1 supply bid, a different insecticide which is currently in inventory. Having the two insecticides with different modes of action is important in insecticide resistance management. $110,500 is budgeted for the annual supply of chemicals and fertilizers. Organic fertilizer was purchased prior to this bid in the amount of $11,742 through the Texas Buy Board. The total cost of low bid items meeting specifications is $79,105. The balance of that account will be utilized to purchase chemicals for which need and use cannot be predicted. City Administration recommends approval of Resolution Number 2020-107. Agenda item I-5 is to consider approving resolution number 2020-116, authorizing an agreement with BGE Incorporated for professional engineering services related uh, to the design of the FBOP lift station rehab project. The Farmers Branch Office Park, or FBOP, lift station is located on the frontage road of LBJ Freeway in front of the parking lot of the Sheraton Hotel. 
The current lift station configuration has all electrical panels underground, which presents significant safety and operational issues uh, during storm events when water accumulates within the underground vault. The remedy is to construct an above-ground building to house all electrical panels and controls. The city has negotiated a professional services agreement with BGE to, act, uh, to assess, rehabilitate, and upgrade the lift station. Renovations are to include relocation and replacement of all electrical equipment, including an emergency generator and automatic transfer switch, to an above-ground installation. This project also includes replacement of discharge piping into a new concrete vault with access hatches, replacement of three submersible pumps as well as uh, wet well coating, pipe coating, and related accessories. The facility is to be screened with a masonry screening wall and overhead canopy with surrounding landscape plantings to match the aesthetics of the Sheraton Hotel adjacent to the station. These modifications will need to meet zoning requirements as any other building project and may require site plan approval by the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council. City Administration recommends approval of Resolution Number 2020-116. Agenda item I-6 is to consider adopting Ordinance Number 3656, authorizing the city manager to execute electrical power purchase contracts with a retail electric provider, as may be recommended by the Governmental Aggregation Project Incorporated from time to time to provide electric power to the city. The city is a member of the Governmental Aggregation Project, or GAP, an, aggrega an electric aggregation group. GAP has and will from time to time negotiate on behalf of its members to purchase electrical power with several retail electric providers registered with the Public Utility Commission of Texas. To obtain the best price in the volatile energy market when the cost of electricity changes daily, the city must sign a contract within hours of receiving the price. Now, The city's current electricity contract with Texas General Land Office, Cavallo Energy, LLC, expires on September 30th. Ordinance number 3656 gives the city manager the authority to enter into a new contract or an extension of an existing contract to provide electrical power to the city. In May 2019, Fox, Smolin, and Associates on behalf of GAP discussed with the city council the city's electricity contract and renewable energy options. At the same meeting, as a separate item, the city council received an update on the status of a request for qualifications for solar energy feasibility study for the addition of solar panel arrays at certain city facilities and a month later approved a related contract with Shore Power. As a result of the completed feasibility study in June 2020, the city council approved solar installations for three facilities on the roofs of the Mansky Library, Community Recreation Center, and New Fire Station Number 2. These solar installations are expected to be installed by November 30th. Upon receiving the completed study and information regarding the approved solar installations, FSA sent out uh, an intent to prospective providers with a reference to the upcoming solar projects, including estimates of in-service dates and generation. Providers using the electricity usage from the most recent 12 months to determine their wholesale purchase uh, the, their wholesale purchase going forward. Since the planned solar arrays have only estimates of in-service dates and generation, there is uncertainty among the providers which may increase the price. All of the providers' contracts that were submitted have a full requirements clause, which is a requirement that all electricity used by a given facility is purchased from that provider. If a facility has on-site generation such as a solar array, an addendum or contract amendment is required. Given that the proposed solar arrays have not yet been installed and are expected to be completed by the end of November, there is no actual usage information, making it difficult to negotiate contract amendments given the time constraints created by the pandemic. The lack of actual data also creates additional risks that would be reflected in the pricing. Fox Mullen is recommending an extension of the city's current contract for a term of eight months. The current provider is willing to provide uh, such an extension with an amendment to the full requirements clause. This would al an allow enough time for a history of usage to accrue at the facilities with the solar arrays for the months of December 2020 through the end of the contract extension and allow the providers to commit to pricing for the next contract. City staff is recommending an extension of eight months with GLO Cavallo and is requesting the input of City Council on the option to purchase renewable energy certificates. An REC is a market-based instrument that represents the property rights to the environmental, social, and other non-power attributes of renewable energy generation. The contracts with the retail electric providers apply to the electricity purchased by the city for city facilities and street lights and does not affect residential or con uh, commercial customer options regarding electricity purchases. City Administration recommends approval of Ordinance Number 3656. And Agenda Item I-7 is to consider approving Resolution Number 2020-119 accepting a Neighborhood Partnership Program application for the Wooded Creek Wall Project. 
The Neighborhood Partnership Program was established in 2017 to build collaborative and sustainable partnerships with the community through neighborhood enhancement projects. Community-driven projects help preserve the cultural identity of Farmers Branch while looking to a sustainable future. The city approved a fund's matching structure capped at $50,000 for neighborhoods that want to create lasting enhancements. Sign toppers, entry features, neighborhood exterior walls, enhancing common and public art are examples of potential projects. Now, the Wooded Creek neighborhood built by a developer who installed one contiguous masonry wall along the exterior facing Marsh Lane. The masonry wall was built on each individual single property along Marsh Lane, including the north and south entrance to the neighborhood. The wall has deteriorated over time. The Wooded Creek wall owners have explored various projects, including wood and masonry, and arrived at a consensus for a wood fence. The eight individual owners of the contiguous wall have applied for the program, hoping to build one contiguous wood fence and demolish the existing deteriorating masonry wall. The new wood fence will attach to the northeast owner's existing wood fence adhering to the subdivision wall code. The neighborhood residents submitted $62,495 quote for the project. They are seeking 60% of the total cost, or $37,497 from the city, and will incur the remaining 40% a uh, 40% balance of $24,998. The Public Works Director will approve uh, project expenditures while the applicant's representative manages the contractor. The $24,998 applicant uh, will be held in escrow at the city for the Public Works Director to authorize expenditures. After the applicant funds are spent, the approved city funds will be released. A memorandum of agreement will be recorded at the county for each of the eight property addresses explaining the details of the agreement for future property owners. In addition, an agreement with the eight owners will detail terms of this program. City Administration recommends approval of Resolution Number 2020-119. That was it for the consent agenda. Here are the other items coming up before the council on their regular agenda. Agenda item J1 is to conduct a public hearing and consider approving resolution number 2020-106, nominating iMart Express LLC to the Office of the Governor, Economic Development and Tourism through the Economic Development Bank as an enterprise project. Agenda item K1 is to consider approving resolution number 2020-120, authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the Trinity Aquifer Well Project. And agenda item K2 is to consider approving a motion to place a proposal to consider adopting a maximum property tax rate of 58.9 cents on the City Council agenda of September 21st. In addition, the Council may recess into closed session, but will then reconvene into regular session to take any necessary action. And that will do it for the August 24th agenda. For more information on those items or the full agenda, log on at FarmersBranchTX.gov. Every regular meeting of the Farmers Branch City Council can be seen live on FBTV, that is Spectrum Cable Channel 16 at Farmers Branch, AT&T Uverse Channel 99 throughout this here Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex or online at www.FarmersBranchTX.gov. This City Council information program will be made available simultaneous to the agenda posting on the Friday before each regular City Council meeting and will air prior to the live meeting as well as before all Council meeting replays here on FBTV. That replay schedule is at 6 p.m. seven days a week. All meetings are subject to change, so stay tuned to FBTV for any updates and more information. In the meantime, the August 24th meeting of the City Council starts at 6 p.m. this Monday evening here at Farmers Branch City Hall. Until then, I'm Tom Bryson. You are watching continuing coverage of the Farmers Branch City Council on FBTV. Please stay with us.